morning. This is the time and place for the zoning cases hearing for October 20, 2010. My name is Edith Fuentes and I will be conducting the hearing as hearing officer. We have one case today and relevant exhibits are posted on the panels located directly behind me. Before I go through our hearing procedure, I um, think our case planner has some information or announcement to make. Milka? Yes, thank you, Ms. Fuentes. Um, we did receive a letter yesterday from the applicant requesting to have the case continued. They did not uh, state it as to when they would like the date, the case to be heard again. Um, we also received a petition on file from neighbors in opposition to this case. Um, going back to the applicant's request to continue the case, if you recall, this case has been already continued um, twice already. This would be the third time. This case was the first hearing took place back in July of this year, and then it was heard again on September 29th. At that time, the case was continued again. The applicant did not provide staff with our request to providing enough information as it relates to how much of the existing combined exterior walls and roof are being removed. That plays a big role in this case because they are requesting one of their variance requests is for to allow to maintain the existing three foot eight inch interior setback. If more than 50 percent of the house is removed, we would need to then uh, re-notice this case, reanalyze it. The findings may change because this would be considered new construction. Therefore, a six foot interior setback would be required. The last time the applicant submitted something to staff was actually the date of the last hearing, which was September 29th, and that's why we had to reschedule it till today's date because we didn't have enough time to review the information. Since then, since September 29th, staff has still requested the remaining items, and that is we need a roof plan showing how much of the existing roof is being removed, and also in addition to the demolition percentages that they provided, we need to know the height of the walls. It needs to actually be noted on the plan for the record so that we can accurately calculate how much of the exterior walls are being removed. According to the staff report, staff is recommending denial on the case because as proposed we cannot or we could not make the four findings. Uh, however, at this time, if you have any further questions regarding the chronology of events, regarding my communication, my multiple emails sent to the applicant requesting the information. I'd be happy to go over that. Uh, however, staff does recommend denial on the case, not only because the four findings cannot be made. In addition, we, like I stated earlier, have been, um, the case has been requested mm -hmm. a couple times. This would be the third time, and the items need to be addressed properly. Okay. So, you are ready to proceed with hearing the case or presenting Staff the case. is ready to hear the okay. case, but and again, um, it's, it's up to the hearing officer. Okay. We have a representative from AMAC group, uh, Mr. Hayward Masihi. Uh, if I decide to hear the case, you're ready to hear the case, uh, to present the case today. If not, then you have no choice. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and hear the case today. It's going to boil down to exactly the same thing anyway. So, Okay, so with that, you can borrow whatever papers we have on file for your application, but I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the hearing. Um, okay, let me go through our hearing procedure. Under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a variance shall be granted if four required findings are present. One, that the strict application of the ordinance would result in practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship inconsistent with the general purposes and intent of the ordinance. Two, that there are exceptional circumstances or conditions applicable to the property involved 
or to the intended use or development of the property that do not apply generally to other property in the same zone or neighborhood. Three, that the granting of the variance will not be materially detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to the property or improvements in such zone or neighborhood in which the property is located. And four, that the granting of the variance will not be contrary to the objectives of the ordinance. If the evidence presented in the application and at the hearing meets the criteria just described, then the planning hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. If the findings of fact are not evident, then the request will be denied. Notification of this hearing was accomplished by the use of public notices, which were mailed to property owners located within 500 feet of the subject property, physically posted on the site in question, and placed in the local newspaper. The public notice was also posted on the city's website. The hearing will proceed as follows. I will read the description of the application or the request, read, read reports received from other city departments, and other letters or communications from interested parties. The case planner will make a brief overview of the case, give analysis, and make a recommendation. The applicant will be asked to come forward stating both name and address and will be asked to present the case within a 15-minute time limit. Others in support of or in opposition to the application and any interested parties will be asked to come forward to speak, again clearly stating both name and address within a three-minute time limit. Lastly, the applicant will be given the opportunity to make closing comments if desired in response to testimonies given by preceding speakers within a five-minute time limit. The hearing will be closed and the case taken under submission. After the hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all persons who responded to the public notice either by speaking at this hearing or by submitting written responses and have provided their name and mailing address. I would like to emphasize that the date of the decision will be the date appearing on the letter. Under the appeal provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code, the decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the decision date and the Notice of Appeal shall be filed with the Building and Safety Division located at Municipal Services Building, Room 101 of this building. If you wish to speak, please write your name and address on one of these speaker forms which have been provided by the front door and submitted to our planning assistant. I would like to also inform everyone that the official proceedings of the planning hearing officer's hearing are recorded on tape as part of public record. Let me just quickly go through some of the comments we have received. Mr. Masihi, did you need to borrow the application you have or you have it with you? Okay, some of the comments we have received. We have an email from a Mr. or a Miss Carrie Karetsky, together with petition signed by neighbors. One, two, three. Six, About seventeen signatures, basically in opposition to the variance application.
another email from the neighbor's uh, dog and Rita Gibbs again in opposition to the application. An email from one of the neighbors, uh, Keith Wagner, again in opposition to the application. From fire prevention, they have a list of comments and conditions, so you can get a copy of that. Water and power, uh, water section. Again, they're asking to double check um, existing fire flow, adequacy of existing fire flow, and cost of any necessary fire or domestic water services to the property. Again, you can get a copy of that. City engineer has um, comments about method of discharge, separate permits for all work within the public right of way, and compliance will, with NPDES requirements. From integrated waste, um, compliance with demolition waste reduction and recycling information. So you can get those information from them. And as far as neighborhood services, there's no outstanding code violation, right, Milka? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And with that, um, I'm going to ask Milka, the case planner, to do a pres presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fuentes. Uh, as you stated, the application for the variance is to allow additional floor area expansion to the existing one-story single-family house while not providing the required five-foot interior setback and also not meeting the maximum allowable 40% floor area ratio. The applicant is proposing again to maintain the existing three foot eight inch interior setback along the north side of the property. Um, their proposal is to add to the existing house. They are proposing to actually add a new second story and that would require a five foot interior setback as they their height would increase from anywhere between 20 to 30 feet in height. The property is located in the R1 low density residential floor area ratio district 2. The property is located on the east side of Carmen Drive north of Mountain Street. The lot size is 5,625 square feet and the size of the house is 1,375 square feet with a detached 357 square foot garage. The surrounding Uses are single family residential and zoning is R1, the low density residential, with the exception of R1R, which is the restricted residential zone located on the west side of the property. Uh, there were no city department, including neighborhood services, that had significant issues related to the variance request. 
the, as I stated earlier, the project does entail expanding the existing ground floor and also increasing the height of the building because they are adding a new second story. The new second story addition would increase the building height to a maximum of 25 feet 6 inches and the overall floor area ratio would increase from 24% to 47%. If you recall, on the July 14th date, those original plans that were submitted with the variance packet, the applicant was proposing 52%. However, they requested to continue the case at that time because they were proposing to lower the floor area ratio and therefore this report reflects those revised plans. Um, the new, as I stated, floor area ratio being proposed is 47%. However, that still does not comply with code. The maximum allowed FAR is 40%. The house size is, as I stated, 1,375 square feet with a floor area ratio of 24% currently. The proposed expansion of 1,397 square feet minus 47.5 square feet of the existing habitable floor area would increase the total FAR, or floor area rather, to 2,665.50 square feet. And again, the FAR would increase to 47%. So as proposed, the house is exceeding the FAR by, or the floor area, by 415.5 square feet. Again, this request to exceed the maximum floor area ratio is a self-imposed hardship. James. The homes were in the neighborhood constructed in the late 1920s and early 1930s prior to the enactment of the floor area ratio requirements, which took place in the 1990s. Both the variance requests exacerbate the existing conditions on the site in terms of size and open space. The subject site is similar in shape and lot size and has similar floor area, uh, floor area compared to other lots in the neighborhood. Therefore, there are no exceptional, exceptional circumstances or conditions that are applicable to the property involved. The total proposed FAR is higher compared to the majority of the homes in the neighborhood with the exception of three homes um, that are noted in the survey that was provided by the applicant. The objective of the floor area ratio standards is to limit the overall bulk of the house and to keep it in proportion with the given lot size. And similarly, the objectives of the having a five-foot interior setback requirement is to provide and maintain reasonable separation between homes in, with certain heights in the R1 zone. So by maintaining this existing 3 foot 8 inch interior setback, which today is considered a legal non-conforming interior setback, would intensify the existing conditions and would be contrary to the objectives of the ordinance and the general plan. In terms of the four findings, as I stated earlier, Staff could not make the four findings as required in order to approve a variance case. If you have any questions or would like me to go over the four findings, I'd be happy to do so. If no. not, they are in the staff report. Yeah. You can just highlight if you okay. want some. So again, as far as the first finding, how would the strict application of the provisions of any such ordinance, it would result in a or would result would not result rather in practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship related to the property inconsistent with the general purpose and intent of the ordinance and again by maintaining the existing size of the house at 1375 square feet does not constitute a hardship and the applicants request to remove a large portion of the existing house and providing an addition the recess on the north side to align it with the existing interior setback would increase the FAR, the total floor area, to a maximum of 47 percent, which again is a self-imposed hardship. There are no exceptional circumstances to the property involved, as I stated earlier. The variance request would exacerbate the existing conditions on the site in terms of its size and open space. And again, the subject site has similar lot, size, shape, and similar FAR compared or similar floor area compared to other lots in the neighborhood. Granting other variants would be detrimental to the public welfare. As stated earlier, the variants would not allow a house to 
The variance would allow a house to significantly increase its size, which would be detrimental to the surrounding properties in the neighborhood. And also, as noted in the in the file, we do have several. <coughs> excuse me, we have several uh, signatures. Uh, in this case, a petition of neighbors in opposition to the case, and in addition to that, we have letters from other neighbors um, or emails also in opposition to the case. And lastly, that the granting of the variance would be contrary to the objectives of the ordinance, and that the house would be allowed to become more nonconforming in terms of its interior setback. Again, the objectives of having the five-foot interior setback is to provide and maintain a reasonable separation between the homes and with certain heights in the R1 zone. And by maintaining that three-foot, eight-inch interior setback, which is existing, would intensify the existing conditions. And by allowing a 47% floor area ratio would create more mass to the existing house in relationship to the lot size. And in addition to that, it would be out of character with the other homes in the immediate area. And with that, that concludes staff's presentation. Okay, good. Thank you very much. And I'm going to go ahead and ask the representative from AMAC Group. Again, I just want to mention this is, um, yeah, let's see. I forgot to mention the case number PVAR 2010-002. Location is 1304 Carmen Drive. Applicant is Gustavo Vici, care of AMAC Group. And the owner is Gustavo Vici. And the project is to allow additional floor area expansion on the first floor and a new second floor addition to an existing one-story single family house without providing the required five-foot interior setback and exceeding the maximum allowed 40% floor area ratio. Um, okay, so Mr. Masihi. Haybird Masihi, go ahead. Hello, uh, my name is Habert Minas Masihi, and I'm in uh, representation of uh, Mr. Gustavo Vici for uh, the address stated, 1304 Carmen Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I'd like to start with um, stating that we did uh, provide details of a roof plan. However, they were, uh, according to the staff, they were insufficient in detail, and they needed uh, staff needed a uh, more detailed roof plan and um, as I spoke with her over the phone uh, Miss Toledo I spoke with over the phone a couple of days ago and uh, she told me that if uh, I told her how we would we might have trouble uh, giving it to her by the time the hearing starts today and she said that she would recommend that I ask for a continuance that's why I would ask for a continuance now because we are getting together neighborhood support uh, for and we are getting petitions signed by the neighbors in uh, favor of this case neighbors that are on Carmen Drive neighbors that live on mountain and also in general the Ross Point area and uh, we just need more time to get that together so we could submit it to, to the unfortunately staff. I already made a decision to go forward with hearing the case so you have 15 minutes to present the case and let's see what all right, I will present it. As I said, we did provide the calculation of the walls. So this is an addition. It is not a new construction. Because uh, the 50%, it's uh, lower than 50%. The demolition is uh, lower than 50%. And uh, the home was reduced, as uh, staff reported, from 52% uh, originally. Uh, applied for down to 47 percent so we could try to comply. So you're saying your demolition percentage today is at 47 percent? No, no, no. The home, uh, the addition that we proposed originally. Oh, the floor area. The floor, floor area, area ratio. was 52 percent okay. and uh, we 
brought now it down to 47 percent to comply with code as much as possible. Okay, and you said you presented or you submitted the information regarding the demolition, the roof. Yes, and the, we did. The, so, what percentage are you going to tell me today? Are you at? Uh, we are demoing about 34 percent. 34 percent. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. To we have uh, we have neighbors and neighborhood that are supporting us. We are just trying to get that together. If I could ask, now that you are hearing the case, if we could turn that information in within this week, the petition supporting this uh, case and in favor of the variance passing. Go if ahead. You allow us to, we would do that. Now, as uh, you stated, you have an email from Ms. Carrie Kretzky. And uh, we tried to reach her, and uh, I tried to explain to her what we're doing with this project. And her main concern was that uh, the house is being is too wide, and uh, I don't think the width is at concern here because the FAR could decrease to 35 percent with the width remaining the same from uh, from the street. And uh, I would like to also uh, state that there are few other homes, as Milka uh, stated, in the area uh, on Carmen as well, that one of them exceeds 47 percent in FAR. And those do not impose a hardship on the neighbors. They do not impose any hardship on the neighborhood either. As far as the uh, the practical difficulties and uh, hardships that uh, the applicant faces, the owner faces, are that he's uh, his family is coming and uh, he needs to expand his home. So that's that's not a self-imposed hardship. His family is having trouble in uh, their current country and uh, they need to move in with him and live with him. That's not a self-imposed. Hardship. He just needs the extra bedrooms. We're trying to comply with code as much as possible, and 47%, like I said, is less than some of the other homes in the immediate area. The exceptional circumstance for this lot is that it's smaller in uh, total area as opposed to the other lots surrounding. Uh, 5,600 square feet is one of the smallest lots on Carmen Drive. So having uh, his home being, uh, having an addition on his home, obviously we would hit the problem of uh, the 40% code because his lot is already small. The variance will not hurt public welfare because if it is granted, will not hurt the public welfare because we're not, um, encroaching in anyone else's property. We're also not adding any additional drivers. We are adding additional residents, but no drivers, no additional cars. There's, there won't be parking on the street. The remaining two-car garage will remain the same. So as far as the three foot eight setback, the second floor is being set back six feet and there's additional jogs in the wall as uh, you could see in the plans. The home is, uh, we are attempting to match the neighborhood. There's a home across the street. It's white and blue. It's in the photographic survey with a balcony in the front. We're trying to match the neighborhood as much as possible as opposed to going uh, out of our way to make a home stand out. It's pretty much my presentation, Ms. Fontes. You're done. If you have any questions for me. Okay, you mentioned that the lot is small. It is small. And I'm I'm looking at your um, location map here and the zoning map here. 
It looks like it's about the same size as the other lots within the area. It's a little smaller than the rest of the lots. How small? Um, and I was also going to ask you if you have a um, comparative analysis of the existing floor area ratio of the other buildings within the neighborhood. Did you do anything like that? Yes, we did. We submitted it. It's part of the. It's part of one of the surveys, as Milka said. Uh, it's the neighboring properties and. What's their, the largest uh, floor area and what's the smallest? Yeah, there's a couple of homes over 47 percent. I think. Or over 40 percent. Over 47 percent. Over 47 percent. What's the average floor area within the area? Floor um, area ratio. I'm not quite sure. We have it written in the application. In you the don't, okay, we don't have it with you. Okay. Um, do you know when this, this house was built? The existing? Nine, 1940s, I believe. 1940. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yeah, we made a effort on reaching out to the neighbors in opposition of this case and uh, try to comply with them as much as possible and see if they would like any changes for us to do and nobody has responded to us. So okay. we made an effort but to even comply from with From July them. to now, you don't have anything in writing from any of the neighbors in support of the application? We do. I just don't have it present. We're you getting that it together. To Okay, thank we'll you very much. We'll submit that this week with your permission, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, seeing there's nobody else here to speak in support or in opposition to this application, do you have any closing comments? No? Okay, Milka, closing comments from staff? Um, just to address Mr. Masihi's comment regarding, um, again, the demolition percentage, we did receive, again, on September 29th, a floor plan that shows demolition percentages for the wall, although they call roof out, but there is no roof plan that was ever included in the packet. They are noting that they are demolishing 34 percent, but again, we just need additional information in order to verify that number that's accurate, just to make sure that we are processing um, the correct variance request. Okay. The last, in addition, the one before this uh, was, and I don't know what date, but it is date stamped, it's behind you. That was also a demolition percentage that was submitted, but that one is inaccurate? Correct. That is, again, a floor plan, does not detail the entire roof detail that we do require. It's dated September 14th. But again, that one was yeah. inaccurate compared to the roof plan that was submitted as part of the variance packet excuse me, the floor plan that was submitted. So as of today, staff does not have the roof plan. If Mr. Misihi has it, we can then include it in the file, but that was never submitted to staff, an actual roof demolition plan. Okay. Um, so basically staff is recommending denial of the application, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so no last minute comment. That's it. We submitted that plan, and the, the roof is marked on it. However, she is correct on the, an actual roof plan showing the demolition is not present. But it does show which parts of the roof are being demoed and which parts are not. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, take this case under submission, and we'll let you know. And closing the public hearing at 10.20 in the morning. Thank you very much.